Picking the right airplane for your mission can be a huge challenge. It can be overwhelming to know what is important and what's truly not. Welcome to the first episode in a new series where I compare two similar but uniquely different airplanes currently for sale at a very similar price. I will select a mission profile and then pick two airplanes that fit that mission. In this first episode, we'll start with a four seat cross country machine. Make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel to check out all of the future episodes. So here's how it's gonna work. I'll do a bunch of research on two airplanes listed for sale. And then I'll detail what I believe are the most important features and differences of each. But more importantly, I want to hear your opinion. Scroll down to the comment section and tell me which of these two airplanes you would choose. I'll even encourage you to tell me why. Once I have enough votes, I'll pin a comment with the results, including any major themes found along the way. Today, I'll be comparing a 1981 Mooney M20J 201 with a 1979 Piper Aero 4, also known as the PA28RT201. I will break the comparison down into five sections. First is paint and interior. Second up, avionics. Third is the engine and prop. Fourth, we'll detail some performance specs. And fifth, I'll talk about whatever else I discover along the way. So how about we jump right into it. Let's start on the outside of the Mooney. It still proudly shows off its original paint, which appears to have been maintained well through its life. If you're a fan of classic 1980s paint schemes and color choices, you'll certainly be able to make the current paint last for many years to come. Moving over to the arrow, it's clear that the paint is significantly newer with a more modern style. The colors are bold and will ensure this piper stands out on the ramp. There will be no need for paintwork other than normal cleaning and polishing in the near future for either of these airplanes. Now the interiors of both airplanes appear to be extremely similar. They are both original cloth without any apparent upgrades since new. I do see one advantage for each of the interiors. First, in the Mooney, it's equipped with shoulder belts in the front and the rear. This is a great improvement for the safety of yourself and your passengers. While the Piper is only equipped with lap belts, I do love that the seats have headrests where the Mooney does not. Headrests would greatly add to the comfort of the Mooney. Without question, both interiors will last for many, many years but they might be on the short list of upgrades if the new owner has some extra cash. There are many variables in the world of general aviation avionics, and there are incredible costs associated with upgrading your panel. Both of these airplanes have very capable IFR panels, but they are both still outfitted with what you would consider steam gauges. Neither have moved into the digital age, with the exception of the GPS in both and the transponder in the Aero. Without a doubt, a couple of Garmin G5s or GI275s are in order here. Notable on the Aero is the GTN650, which is one of Garmin's most current GPSs and of course has WAS capability, which opens up the door to precision GPS approaches. It also has a nicely upgraded digital transponder with its GTX 345, which provides in and out ADS-B capabilities. The biggest hole I see in the Aero's panel is a lack of an autopilot. A Garmin GFC 500 would be a great addition to this bird, but that does come at a significant price. The Mooney is equipped with an older, yet still capable GNS 530 GPS from Garmin, which is also WAS capable. It has an STEC 60 autopilot, which is coupled to the GPS. This addition can greatly reduce pilot workload 
especially when in congested airspace or instrument condition. The transponder in the Mooney is what you might call vintage, which means the ADS-B compliance had to come from another source. In this case, it's the U-Avionics wingtip beacon. Upgrading the transponder would be high on my list of priorities. The first place I would put my money in either of these airplanes is the panel. It might, however, surprise you exactly what I would invest in. I feel an engine monitor is hands down the best place you could spend your money. With low to mid-time fuel-injected engines on both of these planes, having an engine monitor and learning how to use it properly will provide the best chance of prolonging the life of the engine, which is arguably the biggest cost liability on any airplane. It might even let you maximize your efficiency by giving the critical information needed to run lean of peak. Both of these airplanes are equipped with a naturally aspirated Lycoming IO360 variant, which develops 200 horsepower at sea level. The first thing we usually consider when talking about engines is the time since they were last overhauled. In this case, the Mooney engine and propeller were both overhauled 553 hours ago. This is a sweet spot for engines, just past the premature failure period with lots of overall life left. The overhaul is also somewhat recent, taking place in 2007. Two things stand out regarding the Mooney engine. During the last overhaul, high compression pistons were added. To complement the added compression, a tuned power flow exhaust system was added at some point along the way. While we don't know exactly how much power is gained by this combo, there's a good chance it will push the Mooney beyond its published performance. The engine is mated to a pretty standard two-blade Macaulay prop. The two-blade prop will help the airplane gain a few knots in cruise, but could hurt the climb performance a touch. A quick review of the Aeros ad shows an engine with 1200 hours since its last major overhaul. There aren't many more details, but since the total airframe time is over 5500 hours, I have to imagine the overhaul was relatively recent. Again, there aren't many details in the ad, but it appears this engine does have its stock exhaust system, and I have to assume there are not any other significant upgrades as they're not listed. The prop, however, was replaced much more recently, as it only has 216 hours since new. While it is a Macaulay unit, it's a three-blade version, which seems to be more common on the Aero than the two-bladed option. I'm not sure about the story there, Perhaps some aero enthusiasts can inform us in the comments below. Again, the three blade prop might slow your cruise down a touch, but should allow for better climb performance. While we're on the subject of performance, here's how these airplanes stack up on a few of the hot button performance specifications in the general aviation world. I use the same source to find the data for both airplanes, but just be aware, every airplane behaves a bit differently. For cruise speed, there's no surprise that the Mooney outpaces the Aero at 170 knots to 138 knots. The Mooney also tends to climb a little bit faster at a just over a thousand feet a minute, where the Aero is down around 800 feet a minute. The Aero does carry a few more gallons of gas than the Mooney. However, you can see the range is almost identical. This does speak to the efficiency of the Mooney. And finally, useful load. Although they're close, the Mooney does squeak out the arrow with about 70 extra pounds. So here's a few other things that caught my eye. First, both of these airplanes have a unique tail. Of course, the Mooney tail is found throughout its entire lineup of models and is simply iconic. Not to mention, it works pretty darn well. The Aero 4 jumped on the T-tail bandwagon. From what I've read, it works well at high speeds, but suffers in low speed performance as it sits outside of the prop wash. I don't have any firsthand experience, but it's worth noting, it will fly differently than a conventional tail airplane. Both of these airplanes have retractable gear, and the landing gear systems for both seem pretty robust. A couple points on each. 
The arrow takes about seven seconds to retract or extend its landing gear. What I found most interesting is the automatic gear system that the arrow has. It's a system that when engine power and airspeed are both reduced below a threshold, the gear automatically extends. If working properly, this system should prevent unintentional gear up landings. While the M20J moved away from the famous Johnson Bar landing gear system, it still carries a fast and reliable gear, only taking five seconds to actuate. The only real downfall to the system is its use of shock absorbing pucks rather than conventional gas or oil filled struts. It just makes your taxi experience a bit bumpy. Another area to consider is part availability. With Mooney manufacturing seemingly unstable, there could be a little risk regarding parts availability for the Mooney. However, there are aftermarket options typically available, most notably from the manufacturer Lazar. It seems parts will likely be more available or easier to get your hands on for the Aero. However, with our aging fleet of general aviation airplanes, part availability is something all aircraft owners will have to be concerned with. I do want to point out one more time, I'm a little concerned about the amount of detail available in the arrows ad. Perhaps my opinion is becoming a little skewed, but I certainly feel there was greater pride in ownership in the Mooney versus the Arrow. I have to say the Arrow's lack of details just concerns me. Are they unknown or were they just not deemed valuable? A big part of airplane ownership is immersing yourself in the community. I'll say there seems to be strong communities surrounding both of these iconic airplanes. Having a great community surrounding you will make the ownership experience infinitely more enjoyable. Not only will other owners be there to trade glory stories with, they can and will help you learn everything you want to know about your new airplane. The community is the best guidance to the best solutions when the inevitable problem arises. That's all I have to say about these two beautiful airplanes. Don't forget to vote in the comments below, letting the community know which airplane would be the one for you. Thanks again for watching My Time to Fly. I'll see you all soon.